let's move to renal physiology the first part after after the glomerulus is proximal convoluted tubule it contains brush borders this proximal convoluted tubule is composed of cuboidal epithelial cells and the so this part of the kidney reabsorbs all glucose and amino acids and most bicarbonate ion sodium chloride phosphorus ion potassium ion water and uric acid the absorbed this absorption is isotonic and that generates and secretes ammonia which enables the kidney to secrete more hydrogen ion so the proximal convoluted tubule absorbs 60% of isotonic water passively with the reabsorption of solutes regardless of patient hydration state so the parathyroid hormone inhibits sodium phosphorus co-transport that will result in phosphorus ion excretion so the angiotensin 2 stimulates sodium hydrogen ion exchange so results in increased sodium increased sodium ion water and bicarbonate ion reabsorption permitting contraction alkalosis so 60 to 80 percent of sodium is absorbed in proximal convoluted tubule So as you can see here is a proximal convoluted tubule the sodium is absorbed with glucose and sodium is absorbed in exchange with hydrogen ion hydrogen ion will went back to the lumen and sodium will go back into the proximal convoluted tubule cells and from there it will pass out to the interstitium or blood so there is a drug carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is acetazolamide this drug can stop this receptor and result in decrease calcium so another chloride can also absorb in this proximal convoluted tubule okay let's talk about a clinical correlation of this proximal convoluted tubule that is a Fanconi syndrome. This is a generalized reabsorptive defect in this proximal convoluted tubule. This is associated with increased excretion of nearly all amino acids, glucose, bicarbonate ion, and phosphorus ion. This may result in metabolic acidosis, proximal renal tubular acidosis. So why this can lead to metabolic acidosis the answer is simple because the more bicarbonate ion is excreted in the urine so there will be a state developed in the blood that is acidic state because the alkylic state the, the product the main component of alkylic state is excreted out so the causes of these Fanconi syndrome are hereditary defects like Wilson's disease, tyrosinemia, glycogen storage disease, cystinosis, ischemia, multiple myeloma, nephrotoxins, or any drugs like iphosphamide, cisplatin, tenifovir, or expired tetracyclines, and lead poisoning. So in ischemia when there is decreased amount of blood to the kidney so that will also lead to Fanconi syndrome the mechanism is simple I hope you already know the mechanism so the next part of the kidney is thin descending loop of Henle as you can see here this passively reabsorbs water via medullary hypertonicity this part of glomerulus is impermeable to sodium 
concentrating this is a concentrating segment and makes urine hypertonic all right the next segment is about the thick ascending loop of henle thick ascending loop of henle so this reabsorbs sodium potassium ion and chloride ion indirectly induces paracellular reabsorption of magnesium and chloride through positive lumen potential generated by potassium leak back so this part is impermeable to water makes urine less concentrated as it is ascends so this absorbs 10 to 20 percent of sodium so there is a drug that is loop diuretic that works on the sodium potassium to chloride co-transporter so this blocks the function of this transporter that results in decreased absorption of sodium potassium and to chloride so there is a Clinical correlation about, uh, regarding to this part is Barter syndrome. So what will happen? The reabsorptive defect of thick ascending loop of Henle is present. The effects include sodium, potassium, two chloride co-transporter. This enzyme is, this co-transporter is affected in the syndrome results in hypokalemic and metabolic alkalosis with hypercalciuria. This presents similarly to chronic loop diuretic use because these loop diuretics also work on this co-transporter. So it's an autosomal recessive condition. Okay, let's go back to this. The very next segment is early distal convoluted tubule this reabsorbs sodium chloride and makes urine fully diluted or you can say hypertonic the early distal convoluted tubule is impermeable to both water and urea so the parathyroid hormone can increase calcium sodium exchange that will lead to calcium reabsorption so the 5 to 10 percent of sodium is absorbed in early distal convoluted tubule so there is a sodium chloride pump as you can see diuret thiazide diuretics can work on this and that will result in the stoppage of this pump so there is a clinical correlation regarding this part that is a gentleman syndrome the reabsorptive defect of sodium chloride in distal convoluted tubule that will lead to hypokalemia hypomagnesemia metabolic alkalosis hypocalciuria this condition is similar to using lifelong thiazide diuretics it's an autosomal recessive condition less severe than Barter's syndrome. So as you can see, this gentleman syndrome also affect the sodium chloride transporter pump. So the very next segment is about collecting tubule. So the collecting tubule reabsorbs sodium in exchange for secreting potassium ion and hydrogen ion regulated by aldosterone so aldosterone acts on mineralocorticoid receptors that will lead to production of messenger rna that will eventually results in protein synthesis so here are the receptors on which the aldosterone works so that will lead to sodium reabsorption while will while in exchange for secretion of hydrogen ion and potassium so in principle cells increase apical potassium conduction increase sodium potassium pump increase epithelial sodium channels as you can see here are the sodium channels so the number of these channels will also increase 
the lumen negativity results in in potassium secretion so in alpha intercalated cells there will increase hydrogen ion ATPase activity that will result in increased hydrogen secretion so when there is increased hydrogen secretion that will result in increase bicarbonate ion chloride exchanger that is present in beta intercalated cells so there is another hormone that is an antidiuretic hormone acts on v2 receptor that results in the formation of aquaporins on vesicle membrane that results in the water absorption so these channels are in are present on apical side so three to five percent of sodium is also reabsorbed in this part so there is a clinical correlation about this portion is a little syndrome the gain of function mutation of these channel result in increased sodium reabsorption in collecting tubules increased activity of sodium channel results in hypertension hypokalemia metabolic alkalosis and decreased aldosterone this condition presents like hyperaldosteronism but aldosterone is nearly undetectable this is an autosomal dominant condition the treatment of this is an amyloride that is a potassium sparing diuretic all right the very next is a syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess this is an hereditary deficiency of 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase which normally converts cortisol that cortisol can activate mineralocorticoid receptors to cortisone the cortisone cannot activate this mineralocorticoid receptors in any cells that contain these mineralocorticoid receptors so the excess cortisol in these cells from enzyme deficiency can increase mineralocorticoid receptor activity that will result in hypertension hypokalemia metabolic alkalosis low serum aldosterone levels this condition can acquire disorder from gly glycyretinic acid present in liquor rice which blocks activity of 11 beta hydroxygenase hydroxysteroid hydrogenase all right so the treatment of this condition is corticosteroids as we know the exogenous corticosteroids can decrease endogenous production of cortisol the results in decreased mineralocortical receptor activation so cortisol tries to be the same as aldosterone as we know the aldosterone acts on the mineralocorticoid receptors so the cortisol also acts on the same mineralocorticoid receptors and it will increase the activity of these receptors so there will be increased activity of these receptors and they will work the same as aldosterone does